All right, in this video I'm talking about how to alter your layout, um, stretch and shrink your individual measures, and um, overall layout in general. <clears throat> so uh, in the last video I showed you how to copy and paste. So um, let's say that I copy and pasted all of this stuff in here. This is this is like the ascending part of a B-flat scale. Let's say I want to have it to where only this scale takes up this page of my score. There's a few ways we can do this. Um, if I go over here to my breaks and spacers in my palettes, the easiest way to do this, especially on a score, is to either drop a line break or a uh, page break on the last measure that I want on this page. So since it's a score, we'll do the page break. I'm just going to grab it, drag it, and drop it, and it bumps all the following measures to the next page. Now if you're dealing with an individual part, um, you would probably want to use a line break and that would bump stuff down to the next line, but since we only have one line per page, um, line or page break works on this. So I could do it this way. This is the easiest way to do it. Um, but if I wanted to stretch it out uh, manually, uh, to take up only one page, we can do that too. And this stretching and shrinking comes in handy with for other reasons too. So we are going to select all the measures, and honestly, we only have to select one of the lines. We don't have to select the entire page. I'm going to select that much, and in order to stretch it, to stretch it out, you want to push down Shift, and then the right bracket. If you look up by the letter P on your keyboard, to the right of that, you have two bracket buttons a right bracket and a left bracket. Right bracket stretches, left bracket shrinks. So hold down shift, right bracket, we'll stretch it out. And now I've gotten it to where I want it, where I just want the one scale on this page. If I want to shrink it back down, shift, left bracket. That'll shrink it. So right bracket stretches it out, left bracket shrinks it up. And there's only so far that it'll go on either way before MuseScore just, it doesn't do anything else. So, um, uh, again, another way that you can kind of figure out what's on what line or what's on what page is these breaks and spacers too. If you wanted, um, for example, if this, if your clarinet music was way low and then your bass clarinet music was way high, which is not, not what it's going to be, but and stuff is overlapping like that. You can also come over here to breaks, breaks and spacers and use these arrows. Uh, I don't know what it calls it. Staff spacer down, staff spacer up. I would drag this onto my clarinet line, double click on it, pull on the box, and it'll push that bass clarinet part down so you can see the parts. That comes in handy a lot with the tuba line. Usually tuba is too close to whatever is underneath it and you have to space it out so you can see the notes. That comes in handy a lot. Um, and now we'll talk about the actual layout format. So sometimes if you have a lot of instruments, we'll add some instruments here so I can show you what I'm talking about. You have a lot of instruments in your score. You know, you can't, you don't end up being able to see all of them. So you want to shrink the overall layout so you can view all of them at the same time without anybody being cut off. I would go up to Layout up here in your top, click Layout and Page Settings. That's going to allow you to do a lot of different things. So this main thing is scaling. Scaling is how big it is overall. So we're going to decrease the overall size of it. And it'll show us what it looks like down here. We'll be able to see when we can see the very last instrument on our score. So we're going to click down. And now you can see that there is some white space at the bottom and you're able to view all of your instruments. So you can use those arrows or you can kind of just type in numbers yourself and as you can see there that's enough white space or that's enough space so I can see all of my instruments. Oops we don't want that. Um, you can change it to landscape if you want a landscape score, two-sided, whatever you want to do I guess that has to do with printing. Um, your margins, if you're trying to print off pet music, you have to change the margins so that they're a lot smaller. 
Um, so you can use that to uh, make make your music more functional and make it look look more like actual printed music. So we'll click OK. You see it shrunk it down. Um, when you when you print it off to look at it, it's smaller, but on here you can zoom in as much as you want. So this this comes in handy quite a bit. Uh, let's see, some of the other layout things here. Again, your page margins. If if you have uh, if you're putting hole punches in it, you want your odd pages to be spaced out more on one side and your even pages spaced out more on another side just to accommodate those hole punches. Um, but again, this this is really useful. You can fit a ton of instruments on here. Click OK. Um, and in the next video, I'll show you how to split it into parts and some of the formatting you might want to do for parts.